Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today is October 31st, 2021, the day the world commemorates Halloween. Halloween is not a celebration that the church should be celebrating. It's not a day for, for the church to be involved in. It's a day for the occultists to commune with the dead. A day when the borders between the physical and spiritual worlds begin to blur. And evil spirits, spirits of darkness and the dead begin to walk among us. Today we will conclude our two-part series, Deception Part 2, The Devils in the Details. Turn with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. So that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. Paul said that they were not outwitted by Satan, because they were not ignorant of his designs. Or in other words, his plans, his strategies did not take them by surprise. They knew what he was all about. They knew that he was coming after them. They, they knew that the devil was in the details. But the truth is, magic and the occult are making a comeback in today's world. And the church is either ignorant of it or they are blatantly ac acceptive of it. But I believe that the former is true. The church has become ignorant of Satan's schemes. They have become, just as Paul described them in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. People are all about self-pleasure. They're all about their entertainment. They love their television. They love their movies. They love to be entertained. Paul said that their minds are set on the earthly things. They're so caught up in the pleasures of life. They're so caught up in entertainment and satisfying the flesh that they don't see evil being repackaged. They wrap it up in a nice, beautiful wrapping paper and they tie it off with nice beautiful gorgeous bows and they present it to us as something beautiful something nice but someone may may say in a bit of frustration what are you on about brother kenny what are you talking about well this is what i'm talking about they take seemingly innocent children's show and turn them into teaching aids for the occult but don't listen to me. Let us hear it from the horse's mouth. But in this case, let us hear it from the pony's mouth. Greetings, my faithful students. One of the best ways we can harness magical energy is through the careful use of spells. When you think of a spell, you might imagine a set of words that you say aloud. But they aren't always spoken as an incantation. But please, students, don't be shy about attempting spell work. Some of the greatest ponies in history, such as Star Swirl the Bearded, have achieved great things employing spells as a magical conduit. This is My Little Pony, a children's series. It's so beautiful. It's so enticing. They lure their children in with beauty. They lure them in with charm while teaching them the fundamentals of magic. She encourages them not to give up, not to give up on casting spells, but to continue to practice and to become proficient at it, become proficient at doing magic or performing magic. She states, please, students, don't be shy about attempting spell work. But they need to be shy. In fact, they need to be very, very afraid because Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. The scripture says that sorcerers will have their portion in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. A sorcerer is a magician who uses a magic 
or uses an evil supernatural power to cast spells and to perform magic. The children seem to be encouraged to read books with spells and to try those spells. But those aren't just words. It's not all about fun and games. Don't believe that it's all harmless and cute. Magic is a real thing. Magicians are real people. Spells are powerful and they are powered by powerful demonic spirits. Look at Exodus chapter 7 verse 10 through 12. It says, So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, also did the same by their secret arts. For each man cast down his staff, and they became serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Aaron threw down his rod, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh was not impressed. That did not impress him in the least little bit. He was like, is that your best? Is that the best that you can do? My magicians can do better. So Pharaoh summoned his magicians and they came and did the same thing that, they, that, that Aaron and Moses did with no problem. They did it by their secret arts. Halloween is a time when the airwaves the television shows are inundated with magic and with spell casting. Ghosts and goblins, ghouls and spirits. Our television sets are catalysts for training in the occult, training in magic. Is it any wonder why they call it tell a vision? And they're broadcasting, they call programming. They're casting a vision. To program our children into being magicians, into being witches. They lead them astray from God with their programming. The word abracadabra, for instance, is a very familiar word. Every childhood spell that a child casts either starts or ends with abracadabra. And it seems so innocent. But did you realize that abracadabra is one of the very few words that can be typed with using only the left hand side of the keyboard. It is by far the longest word, the word with the, uh, the word with the most letters in it to be typed with only the left hand. Also, did you know that abracadabra was the first mentioned in the second century AD in a book called Liber de, de Medicanalis? by Serenus Samonicus. That's a mouthful right there. He was a physician to the Roman Emperor Caracalla, who in chapter 51 prescribed that malaria sufferers wear an amulet containing the word abracadabra written in the form of a triangle. He claimed that the power of the amulet makes lethal diseases go away. End of quote. Words are very important because words are very powerful. I'm working on a message called Not Just Mere Words. In it, I show the importance of words, the effect that they have on water and other things. Hopefully, we'll have that ready for next year, Lord's willing. Apparently, experiments were done with words written on it. And and they, they, they put different words with different things. And some of the words were bad words. Some of the words were good words. The good words turned out to be good. And the bad words turned out to be bad. So is it any wonder or is it any surprise that the incantation caused that malaria to be healed? Words, as I said, are very powerful. Because words are important. God used words to create everything that we see. Even that which we do not see. Except for man, everything that God created, he spoke it into being. 
words are powerful. God said, let there be, and there was. As I mentioned earlier, the church should not be unaware of Satan's schemes, but the truth is, we are. We get tripped up every time with the same things. What happens is that the occult is dusted off, it's cleaned up, it's repackaged in nice tidy boxes like My Little Pony that we just witnessed and shows like The Little Mermaid in which Ursula sings a magic spell in order to take, take um, Ariel's voice. Almost every Disney movie either has some type of magic in it or some type of darkness in it. We're living in a time of the occult, a time of darkness. Even in a children's game that they play on the phones are filled with evil and with darkness. My daughter was playing a game the other day on her phone where she would build a park. And throughout the game, you would hit different levels. And at each level, you would unlock random characters that would help you build your park and help you to, to make it better. The very first character that she unlocked was a demon. He was like Roman. He came and wouldn't leave. So right now, your child, your children could be playing games where demons help them achieve their goals, help them achieve their objectives. Needless to say, Ari deleted that off her phone completely. You know, parents buy string dolls for their kids, not knowing what's behind it, not knowing what it's all about. These string dolls is nothing less than string dolls with demons attacked or attached to them. The string dolls have their origin in northern Thai Thailand, and they are created for voodoo. It is just repackaged evil. They have commercialized evil. They have commercialized magic. Remember that you can open doors to the demonic entities by bringing the accursed into your homes, knowingly or unknowingly. And these demonic entities will cause chaos in your life. Annabelle the doll was a real doll. The doll was given to the daughter by her mother as an innocent birthday present. It was purchased as a used Raggedy Ann doll from a hobby store hobby store. They didn't know who had it. They didn't know what, what, what the doll went through. They knew nothing about it. They just bought this used doll and it all seemed innocent. But the doll would move on its own throughout the house. The daughter would leave the, ho the, the doll on the couch and later she would come looking for the doll, could not find it, and, but she would find the doll in her room lying on her bed and the door would be closed. Then what started to happen was that blood began to appear on the doll's chest and on the back of her hand, seemingly out of nowhere. A friend who shared the apartment with her thought that the doll was evil and began to distrust the doll and he wanted it gone. He woke up one night and the doll was at, at his feet, the foot of his bed, looking at him, just staring. Then the doll began to choke him, and he passed out. There were many other creepy incidents involving this doll. Just an innocent doll, bought for a child's birthday present. Right now, that doll is in the occult museum with a binding prayer. Just a spell, another spell around it. With a warning sign, and the warning says positively do not open. Apparently people have gone to see this doll in the occult museum and have mocked it and wound up in near fatal car accidents or other type of accidents. One of the accidents involved a motorcycle in which a young man had lost control, hit a tree and was killed on impact. He had just left the museum where he was laughing at the doll and making fun of it and mocking it. And he wound up dead. What I'm saying is 
the occult is a real thing. You can invite evil into your house through things, through entities. People take the occult and magic lightly. They, they don't believe that you can let the occult into your house through your television sets, through what you watch on TV, through what you listen to, through what you read. They take it to be silly children's idea. But the truth is, the church needs to wake up from the sleep. We cannot be like ostriches who bury their heads in the sand. We must stand up. We must look around. We must cast out the demonic spirits. We do not cohabitate with evil. According to Ed Warren, the demonologist who took Annabelle's doll and put it in his museum, and I quote, he said, the Episcopal blessing of the whom is a wordy seven-page document that is distinctly positive in nature. Rather than specifically expelling evil entities from the dwelling, the emphasis is instead directed toward filling the house with the power of the positive and of God, end of quote. But we do not cohabitate with evil. We do not allow evil spirits to live in our home and consume our lives. Our focus is first never to let them in intentionally. If one slips in by accident, your focus is on removing it from your life, removing it from your house. You do not cohabitate with evil. Cast it out. Drive it out. Toss it out. Evil spirits are not welcomed. Here, when you celebrate Halloween, you invite the occult. You invite the paranormal into your home. Spirits are waiting for an opportunity to enter in. Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, verse 24 through 26, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places, seeking rest and finding none. It says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Evil spirits are real. The demonic is real. Possession is real. Do not be fooled into believing that it's all fun and games. Do not let the prettiness of evil all dressed up fool you. We, we, talk about, we talked about this last week in part one where Snow White was fooled by the pretty red delicious apple. But one bite sent her into a deep, deep sleep that she could not wake up from. So the church is being fooled by programming labeled family or programming uh, called children's entertainment. But it is not. The church must wake up. We must raise our standards. There's a war going on, a spiritual war. I want you to check out our, our video that's called, Is Demon Possession Real? Can dolls and inanimate objects be demon possessed under a too deep category? We placed the link below. This Halloween, do not let the occult into your house. Do not let the demonic into your homes. Open your eyes and see. Wake up from your spiritual sleep and do not be fooled anymore. Remember, the devil is in hell. The return of Jesus is close. Evil is abounding. We no longer cohabitate. In fact, we will not cohabitate with the occult. We will not cohabitate with demons. We are to clean the house. We are to drain the swamp. We are to get rid of all that is wrong and all that is accursed. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Do you know him?
Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you know Him? If you don't, you can. He's made it really easy for you. All you have to do is to ask. And everyone who comes to Him, He will receive. If you if you want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my iniquities. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. Help me to be the type of person, the kind of vessel that you can use. And I'll do what you've called me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do is to buy a Bible, buy a highlighter, highlight the promises, highlight those things that are meaningful to you. Find yourself a Bible-believing church, a church who still believes in holiness, who still believes in righteousness. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. When the Lord comes back, He'll find you doing what it is you should be doing. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Be blessed. Stay blessed.